This episode of News Dump is brought to you by Express VPN. Very spooky. Yeah. It's Halloween. Yeah, happy Halloween. All right, so uh, Kim Kardashian. Ooh. <laughs> Very spooky. Uh, you're saying to yourselves, nah, guys, come on. She's a reality star. Don't give her the attention she so desperately craves. And you're right. You're right. You're right. But as sad as it is to say, Kim Kardashian has a monumental effect on all of our realities, whether we want to admit it or not. She holds a great deal of influence in this world to people who, you know, they might not be you personally, but there's a lot of people out there who are influenced by her. Uh, also, it's not like she watches our show, so she's not really getting that attention, right? So, I hope not. Despite what you think about her, how she became famous, or mm. how she remained in the spotlight for the better part of two decades, she is a prominent figure in America, and she had one hell of a weird week. Yeah, so, okay, leading up to this, we would assume that she'd completely turned a corner, because it appeared as though she had been using her influential powers for good in recent months and years. Uh, she was apparently studying to become a lawyer. She's been a driving force behind prison and criminal justice reform. She seemed to emphatically try in vain to get her weirdo husband Kanye West the help that he so desperately needed during multiple manic depressive episodes. And more recently, she donated a million dollars to the Armenia Fund. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden this past week, she turned back heel and seemingly grabbed every ounce of attention that was available on social media website Twitter.com through braggadocious or just plain weird moments of complete oversharing. Yeah, that's the main problem. You didn't have to share this, Kim. We didn't have to know. It's like there was that Imagine video, you know, a week, yes. nine days into the pandemic, and then celebs, they they learned from that. The backlash is like, oh, okay, people don't really want our opinions on we any should of this. Stay out we should of just this. lay low, yeah. keep it offline. But it's now been long enough that it's, it's come full circle. Yeah, now, okay, conspiracy hat on. Every time something incredibly serious dominates the online discourse, it seems like a celebrity pops in and does something ridiculous to just dominate that timeline. And I'm not saying that Kim Kardashian is a Trojan horse of diverted attention. I'm just saying that the vibe online switched from people outraged that K uh, Amy Coney Barrett had been rushed through and sworn into the Supreme Court just one week before a presidential election to diverting anger at Kim Kardashian over what amounts to inconsequential bullshit pretty damn quick. Mm. And it really felt like the White House had a Kim Kardashian button installed right next to the one that launches nukes. So, look, what was everyone, everyone online mad about all of a sudden? Well, Kim got her close friends and family tested and attempted to do a family vacation to some private island somewhere while trying to be as safe as possible about it. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the tweet. After two weeks of multiple health screens and asking everyone to quarantine, I surprised my closest inner circle with a trip to a private island where we could just pretend things were normal just for a brief moment in time. Yeah. Uh, with some photos of a bunch of her family and friends grouped together having a great time. Not a mask in sight. Just like the old days. Yeah. yeah. And whatever. Look, she's obscenely wealthy. That's a discussion for another time. Um, but you know where we stand on that. Yeah. Pay more taxes. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really surprise us one bit that she or anyone else worth hundreds of millions of dollars. I think she's technically a billionaire. I think she's uh, just under a billion. Well, her yeah. and Kanye combined, they're, and they're plus, a billionaire family. Yeah, and and the, the Kardashian-Jenner clan as a mm -hmm. whole. Yeah. A lot of money. Uh, it, so, yeah, it makes sense that they would get a bunch of people tested and then go party on a private island. Any, any person that has hundreds of millions of dollars is probably doing this. If Jeffrey Epstein were still alive today... Oh, he'd be having a rager with every li Little St. James would be popping off. <laughs> Not a mask in sight. Uh -huh. Hi, Jeffrey Epstein here. You know, I thought it would be nice for my birthday if I, me and all my closest fellow pedophiles, uh, you know. We, we, now, got we all tested. got tested, for, all the got coronavirus. tested for the coronavirus. It's safe. And the little girls, too. They got tested. They got, we, we tested everyone. We wouldn't catch it from them. Yeah. And we all went down to little St. James. Jizz Lane did the testing. Yeah. Jizz Lane. Jizz Lane. <laughs> Um, yeah, so none of this is really shocking, but it's the fact that she thought that it was a good look to share this information with the world, especially the part about pretending things were normal for a brief moment in time. That's what, yeah, really, that's what touched a nerve. Yeah, with I mean, America. Look, I'm sorry, but there's absolutely nothing normal about having a private island getaway where you quote danced, rode bikes, swam near whales, kayaked, watched a movie on the beach, and so much more. Uh, that's just not normal for 99.9% .9 of the world, even at any point before we were at the mercy of a worldwide pandemic. Mm -hmm. It's not normal. So, yeah, I mean, the fact that she would do something like this with her friends and family, not really shocking. I, look, there's probably a lot of rich people that are doing this. They're just keeping it to themselves. But posting about it as if it's something that people could relate to or be inspired by or, I don't know, 
whatever. That was such a complete misfire that it baffles the mind. And, I mean, she heard plenty of the responses, that's for sure. Uh, the, the post quickly became a meme, and it was run into the ground almost as fast as posts about the fly on Mike Pence's head during the uh, vice presidential Memes debate. Memes have such a short shelf life nowadays. I know. You, I know. You can sleep through them. Yeah. That, back 2010 to 2015, memes or people going viral on like local news or viral videos would last a week or more. I remember laughing about somebody touching my spaghetti for yeah. six weeks. <laughs> yeah. What happened? It took up an entire month of my life. Everyone just ruins it so fast. Uh -huh. I mean, I got, there were lots of people just quote tweeting her tweet yeah. and then adding images from a famous movie or a TV show that take place on an island. And that would get you some some quick, easily attainable likes and retweets. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how it gets driven into the ground. I didn't think really so any of them were funny, though. That's another thing. Like, this meme, I didn't, none of it made me laugh. Here's the problem with the meme is that this already happened with someone way less famous than Kim Kardashian. I think it was just... I could be mistaken because I'm not really up on all of the TikToker and uh, tr celebrities that aren't in the main ecosphere. Yeah. But th I've seen the tweets before of, we all got tested, everyone's safe, so we went and did this thing all together. I've seen that from the summer and beyond. Yeah. yeah uh, so I think that's the thing, too, is like this meme has already been run into the ground before the Kim Kardashian thing. But it's like some of the island things didn't even make sense. Yeah. Also, like, uh, I think it was today. Did you see Tyra Banks's out of touch celebrity tweet? Yeah. It's yeah. Like, sometimes it's fun. You guys should try this. So sometimes I like to order the same menu item, but from like five different restaurants, from like, three different delivery services, so they all show up at my house at once and I can compare them. Yeah. Well, the, the, the difference fun, right? between uh, <laughs> that is that I think everyone these days is on board with the fact that Tyra Banks is kind of a lunatic. Yeah, we've known. <laughs> so We've known. Regardless of driving the Kim K meme into the ground, it literally dominated the Twitter timeline for an entire day. Yeah. It was insane. So anyway, then when you thought, just when you thought that maybe, just maybe, Kim K had been shamed into not posting random and excessive shit on the timeline, we found out, once again, that shame clearly no longer works, especially yeah. on this family. Because on Thursday of this week, Kim Kardashian somehow topped the previous tweet by leaps and bounds. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to a video of a birthday present given to her from her husband, Kanye West. Which I didn't even think that they were on, like, yeah, I, good... Maybe they, they're on good terms. They haven't even been like seen together in a like a year. He's been I, busy with his like weird presidential campaign. Yeah, he lives and, out in a bunker yeah, in like, Wyoming or something. Yeah, I, but I hey, uh, and he wasn't in any of like the pictures from the week leading up to this. So maybe he's not even there. He just like sent the file. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, he got her a very unique, one of a kind gift. And what was the gift? It was a hologram visit from her dead dad. <laughs> Hey, kids. Hey, kid, it's me, your dead dad. Yeah. Uh, so, look, we've talked about this type of thing before. Um, a visit from uh, dead relatives, hologram, or seeing them recreated in virtual reality. Uh, there was one recently that I don't think we talked about, but it was uh, one of the Parkland students who died in that mass shooting. Uh, his likeness was used with his parents' permission in, like, an ad about, like, hey, what's up, guys? I'd still be alive if I didn't get killed at Parkland by guns. That's like and the ghost chips ad in New Zealand. I don't know what that is. Grab a chip. Want a chip? You know I can't grab your ghost chips. Go away. But, uh, yeah, it was real weird. And everyone's just like... So, yeah, I, this is something we're going to keep seeing more and more of. Yeah, but... it's... I mean, we might have to just get used to it, I guess. It's yeah. strange. So, I, I mean, look, uh, apparently, clearly, you're, a person's reaction to seeing a close dead relative... <laughs> That's on you. Reanimated right in front of them? It, it depends. It's personal From, preference. It, it, it's entirely based on how you view the situation. Yeah. Some people might really enjoy it. Kim K seems to have <laughs> appreciated it, I it. guess. Some people might be horrified by it uh, in a deeply, like, existential, uncomfortable way. Yeah. Um, some people might even be left feeling worse than before, before they knew such a thing existed. Uh, it's, it's basically a Black Mirror plot that is now here if you're rich enough. Yeah, well, it's like, so if it wasn't a, it's not really a hologram. So if it wasn't like a 3D looking projection, mm -hmm. it would just be a video that someone made acting like they're your dead relative. He could have just hired David Schwimmer, who played Look, I, Rob I, Kardashian in uh, The People vs. OJ and did a pretty good job. He did a fantastic job. It's a great miniseries. <laughs> but when I saw this, 
I thought it looked more like the David Schwimmer impersonation of Robert Kardashian than actual Robert Kardashian. Maybe the maybe the whoever the the VFX person he hired probably some people based off <laughs> people in like Malaysia yeah. or something. They're like, okay, Robert Kardashian. They like there googled it and they're like, all right, let's uh, let's make a three D version of this guy. But they accidentally pulled up David Schwimmer off the internet. Anyway. That's not really her dad. No. <laughs> it's not. Her dad is dead. Yes. That's that's uh, an actor playing her dad, saying a bunch of pre-written lines. Yeah, we'll get to that. Clearly written by <laughs> Kanye West specifically yeah. with a deep fake face added on top. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, there, look, there's a lot to unpack here, including the fact that... The, I just uh, love that they, that they did it right before Halloween. <laughs> Hello, it's me, your father, Kimberly. I'm back. It's I'm so proud of you. And I know you're saying to yourself right now, guys, <laughs> go easy. It's a person's dead father. Some she people got po- very mad at me for making she fun of this. She posted this on the internet for everyone to see. Yeah. If there was if this was something that like leaked by uh, you know, someone at whatever resort they're at or something and it was like, "Oh, well, that's deeply personal to Kim. She wouldn't want that." Yeah, she, you know, she, she enjoyed shared this. She's, this. This was something she was proud that of yes, me. that it it's okay, I think to Yeah. I got yelled at a little bit. Like, Why your own fucking business? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, cool. I Calm don't down. follow her, and yet I saw the tweet. So yeah. it's hard for me to mind my own yeah. business. Look, okay, as I was saying, a lot to unpack here. I mean, we've already done a bit of it so far. But uh, the fact that this hologram or projection or whatever you want to call it, uh, first off, it just wasn't very good considering the incredible capabilities of 3D artists, animators, programs, and just computers in general. It kind of looked like a uh, Far Cry villain. Yeah. <laughs> It just wasn't very easy. <laughs> it didn't seem very real. The audio was out of sync in part. And yet, it kind of looked more like a ghost than a living, breathing human being. Like a force ghost. Yeah, but okay, whatever. It, it seemed as though she liked the gift and she thought as, or thought of it as a thoughtful thing. But again, she posted it to Twitter where it was able to be wildly mocked. I, not only because it was a little weird and, you know, it was obviously a lot of people's first foray into the world of holographic dead relative experiences. Yeah. But also because it really seemed like Kanye injected in some of his own personality and clearly his own words into a man who had died nearly a decade before him and Kim even started dating. My favorite tweet was like someone... because. It was going around, but the video is like three minutes long. My favorite tweet was just like, I feel like a lot of people are passing this around and sharing it without watching the whole thing. Because yeah. there's a specific moment in here. It's like a minute 30 <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah, there's a specific moment here where it goes from crazy to 10 times crazier. We're just going to show that part. Yeah. So here you go. There you go. You married the most, 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 most genius man in the whole world, Kanye West. Okay. Uh... Yeah, he's he's definitely projecting in his projection. But, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> she thought it was sweet, so whatever. Who cares? It's not I don't our know. business about her reaction. It's, it's just like my reaction. It's similar to like those Puerto Rican funerals where they they uh, embalm the body and like pose it with all of its favorite stuff. Like the guy riding the motorcycle. And you like hang out with them. Or the it's one just playing video games. weird. Like okay, if that's if that's cool with you, that's great. But for me, I find it deeply unsettling. Yes. And, you know, different strokes, I guess. Blast my ashes into space. Um, there, yeah, there are a lot of moral quandaries you might have about the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, personally, I I mean, I'll be dead, so I won't really care. But yeah. Robert while, Kardashian doesn't care. While I'm alive currently, the idea of using my likeness after I die <laughs> to praise the genius of the craziest fucking rapper on the face of the earth, I don't feel comfortable with that. Yeah. I don't like it. Also, it's like, hey, by the way, I'm here. It's me, your dad. Me, your dad I dad. might not be proud of what my kid has yeah. done. Yeah. Hey, I like, might be disgusted I'm by it. I'm watching over you. Okay. That's weird. Stop. Yeah. I don't know. At all times? Uh, dad? So, like, Look. the person on the receiving end of a deeply personal holographic message from a dead loved one who also brags about their sniffing on their very large brain, I don't know. They, There's a chance that person could have reacted extremely negatively to the whole thing <laughs> if it was sprung on them. It's a gamble. Uh, it, Kanye took a huge gamble. It could have horrified them. Yes. Could have taken the place of an actual real memory that they have of that person. It's good that Kim liked this. Yeah. Like, could you imagine? I'm like, glad she did. I, the, I don't know. I don't understand it, but I'm glad she liked it. Because uh, otherwise, it would have been horrifying. I would say that there's a lot of people out there that are very lucky to see their parents go to old age. Yes. Uh, and uh, But there's a lot of people out there whose parents die of cancer or accidents or anything like that. And the memory they have of them is cherished, I would hope, throughout their lives. 
and it's a real memory. It's a mm -hmm. real memory of that person. You remember a, a scent or something they did for you. And then this comes in yeah. and shoves its way in. And it's like, oh, yeah, the last thing I remember of my father is the hologram that called my husband a genius. Yeah. But hey, she loved it. Yeah, so she did whatever. like it. She liked <laughs> it. Congratulations, Kim. Happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's none of our business. None of our business. We're just pointing out that, uh, in our opinion, it's very strange and weird. Uh, especially because she chose to share it with the world. Yeah. But we're certainly curious as to what's going to top this next week because it's election day on Tuesday and the world's going to need a distraction from this uh, social media superhero or supervillain. Yeah, however you want to look at Kim, it. Kim, what do you got for us next week? <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Uh, anyways, here's one more quick update related to celebrity status in the news before we change the subject. And it's only so we can finally put a nail in this story's coffin. Today was the day. After following this story for almost two years, wow. today was the day that Aunt Becky, Lori Lachlan, went to jail for her part in the college admission scandal dubbed Operation Varsity Blues. Jesus. Can you believe how fast time goes? Wow. Lachlan pleaded guilty back in May of this year alongside her husband, the Mossimo guy. <laughs> Here to forward named the Mossimo guy. I mean, his, his name is just Mossimo. <laughs> He's behind the brand. The Mossimo guy. And under her plea agreement, she was to serve two months in a California prison. Two months in prison seemed like a decent amount of time for her, I, I guess, all things considered. But for a while, we wondered if she would ever get to serve any time behind bars. Or maybe she would just end up getting a pass and serving from home because of the pandemic. Well, uh, yeah, today we got our answer and she surrendered herself to the authorities Friday morning so that... She could start serving that sentence. Mm -hmm. The question now is whether or not she'll be forced to serve the full two months behind bars, only being released in early 2021, or mm -hmm. if she'll end up getting out early like Felicity Hoffman. It was like 13 days or something. Yeah. 14 days. She was sentenced to 14 days. I don't know. She got, uh, she got out three days early. Yeah. It technically, it comes out being released only 20% of the initial... I don't know. Whatever. If for some reason Lachlan works out the same kind of deal that Felicity Huffman did, uh, she could get out two weeks early, which would put her home in time for Christmas and would serve as a great, great plot to a future Hallmark family Christmas movie starring Lori Lockman. I'm home in time from, for Christmas. And John Stamos as the Bosmo guy. <laughs> yeah, and her daughter, who uh, I think still hates her. Yeah. This is very embarrassing for me, Mom. I didn't want to go this to school is, This has really killed, because her daughter had a pretty, like, burgeoning YouTuber, TikToker, Instagram influencer career going mm -hmm. before all this shit hit. Her mom ruined it for her. Yeah, it. she did. All because All they needed the status symbol of going yeah. to a college. And like yeah, her daughter was literally like, Mom, I don't want to go to college. I know what I want to do. I want to be like an actress like you and do YouTube stuff. And, nope. And I, I don't, like, uh, realistically, I don't need to go to college. There's no fucking reason for me to do that. I'm like, no, what are our friends going to think if you don't go to Yale? No, she went well, to USC. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so that's done. All of it. Operation yeah. Varsity Blues, case closed. It's a thing of the past. We'd like to hope something changed because of it, but we doubt it. Yeah, this is um, going to be happening. It, they might take like 10 years off of uh, doing like some backhanded deals like this, and then it's just going to ramp right and they're back probably up. just being a lot smarter about it. I mean, the only reason this thing fell apart was because uh, the guy in charge of it was doing it really dumb. He's yeah, a blatantly. fucking idiot. Too many links in the chain. Too many links in the chain. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. It was, it was, uh, the court documents were hilarious, but it was like, even with how stupid they were, it still took years before this thing came apart. Yeah. And... The amount of justice that was served really wasn't a whole lot. Yeah, it's not really going to dissuade anyone from yeah. continuing to do this, especially if there's money in it. Yeah, like our, our old boss, Steven Semper Vivo. He's probably like, fine. Yeah, he was like in and out and like, I think he spent like yeah, six best, weeks in the prison. The best part is like, even if he's like financially ruined, it's like, oh, what happened in the, oh, there's something weird happened in 2019, 2020. Oh, it was the pandemic. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. He got hit by the coronavirus, so, you know, there wasn't a lot of work going around. Anyways, I'm not going to look into this any further. Welcome yep. to the job. Welcome to the job. Anyways, before we get into the rest of the entertainment news scrapings from the past week, let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Every day on the news, there's some story about how technology is creeping into our private lives. Remember when an Apple employee came forward and revealed that iPhone Siri picks up all kinds of weird stuff? Private conversations? drug deals, even intimate moments. Ooh. All that audio is available to countless human reviewers to just casually listen to. And it's not just Apple. I mean, Facebook, Google, Amazon, they've all recently come under fire for doing the same kind of stuff. 
Now, I don't know about you, but we don't like the thought of someone sitting in an office listening to us unless they're listening to this show. Yeah. That's why we use ExpressVPN to secure all of our devices, not just our phones, uh, our, our computers, our tablets, smart TVs, everything gets locked down mm -hmm. with ExpressVPN. They encrypt and anonymize all your data to keep it hidden from unwanted outside snoops, creeps. Mm -hmm. ExpressVPN is so easy to use, you just fire up the app, tap one button, and you're protected. Go online, search ExpressVPN. It's the number one rated VPN provider on the market. Trust us, you won't find anything better. Mm -mm. Take action and protect yourself like we have with ExpressVPN. This is our special link, expressvpn.com slash news dump. Right now, you can claim an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Support the show, protect yourself. That's ExpressVPN, E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash news dump for three extra months free. It's a good deal. Get it. All right, now uh, back into the news with an update on Borat. <laughs> it turns out Kazakhstan, uh, they like him now. After, yeah. after years upon years of very public disapproval from and the country. And you know what? As much as I love Borat, I see both sides of this particular angle on it. Yeah. Yeah, he makes them look like uh, racist idiots. Well, he also, he treated Kazakhstan as if it was like a fictional country. They filmed all the Kazakhstan parts in, in a, Romania. In Romania. We drove through that city. It's real. Yes. That place exists. And it's just like that, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Anyways, back when the original Borat was released, uh, Kazakhstan was pretty unhappy about the film. Basically, angry that the character was a terrible re representation of the citizens of the country. Yeah. And then, of course, there was at least one occasion <laughs> where the national anthem for the Borat movie played over actual Kazakh athletes. It's happened so many times. Yeah. Uh, I could only find, like, an article about one of them, but I remember seeing it pop up frequently. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah, we're pretty sure their government wasn't too happy about the national anthem from the Borat movie playing over their athletes. But look, things started to take a turn around the early 2010s, a good half decade since the film's release. All right, you got us. Mm -hmm. We all had fun, right? Uh, that was uh, because of, you know, regardless of how the country was portrayed in the film, and despite the fact that, like Elliot said, a lot of the scenes that were supposed to depict Borat's home country were actually filmed elsewhere, Kazakhstan, regardless of all that, actually saw a significant boost in tourism, which added to their local economy. I would like to someday uh, visit Kazakhstan, mostly because that's where all of the rockets take off from, mm -hmm. or at least most of them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you want to see a NASA launch, you got to go to the middle of fucking nowhere in Kazakhstan. Not anymore, though. Thanks, yeah. Elon Musk. Oh, uh, cool. Anyways, with the recent release of the Borat sequel, subsequent movie film, the country is seemingly in full support of the character and embracing the fact that the rest of the world seems to like him <laughs> in order to keep that tourism money coming in. Once the world's back to normal, I guess. Or they could be one of the countries that's like, fuck it, come over. No mask necessary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the Kazakh Tourism Bureau has launched an ad campaign using one of the catchphrases from the character. Very nice. As a way to show off the country's natural beauty. Yeah. They don't go as far as saying the phrase as Borat would. Or as you just did, although that'd be hilarious. Come here and bring your wife. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bunch of people all saying, very nice, when experiencing what Kazakhstan has to offer, with the slogan added in exclamation at the end of each ad. Here's an example. Very nice. I mean, there's one guy that kind of does sound like When you it. come to Kazakhstan, you'll feel like a king in the castle. <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, on the Netflix side of things, Assassin's Creed, the movie, might not have been the smashing financial or critical success. I forgot that, that existed. 20th Century Fox had hoped for. Uh, and has, that movie has almost certainly been tossed onto the pile of feature films that were based on video games that just weren't very good. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that live-action adaptations of this gaming franchise are done because... Netflix has just announced they're bringing a live-action series of this game to their streaming platform. According to a write-up from The Verge, quote, the show will be the first of several new series Netflix announced as the agreement between the streaming platform and Ubisoft will, quote, tap into the iconic video game's trove of dynamic stories with global mass appeal for adaptations of live-action, animated, and anime series. Oh, something for the weebs. Mm -hmm. It continues with a quote from Netflix executive Peter Friedlander who said, from its breathtaking historical worlds and massive global appeal as one of the best-selling video game franchises of all time, we are committed to carefully crafting epic and thrilling entertainment based on this distinct IP and provide a deeper dive for fans and our members around the world to enjoy. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is obviously nothing new for Netflix, who was able to deliver a live-action series based on The Witcher last year that seemed to be enjoyed by fans of the game, as well as people trying to fill a Game of Thrones-sized hole in their viewing habits. There's, yeah. um, what's that? Uh, well, uh, not Wolf, why do I keep 
thinking Wolfenstein, uh, the other, uh, we interviewed the guy who made it. <laughs> what the fuck was that? I don't know. It was like an anime. Um, an anime, huh? Oh, Castlevania? Castlevania. Yeah. Yeah. That guy. Apparently people like that show yeah, They a lot. love it it's a lot. It's very popular. They don't um, like him as much, but they like the show. I thought he was interesting. He's a very interesting he's person. A, he's a he, he's definitely a unique guy. Yeah, he is. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, the, you know, it's odd. I, I don't know if it's still in production. I didn't look it up, but uh, they were supposed to make a uh, a division live action thing with Jake Gyllenhaal, which oh, but yeah. like but like Forgot paramilitary forces fighting each other in the wake of a devastating pandemic. A little too on the hey. nose right now. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. Uh, yeah, I, I, so anyway, there's no information regarding a release date for this series. There are like, it sounds like multiple series. I don't know. Yeah. Don't get too excited. It's probably at least a year or two off. Uh, um, also, Netflix just raised their prices. Basic is uh, raised by a dollar. Uh, premium up to $18 now. So that's crazy. Damn. Damn. I can't think of what I really watch on there anymore. I might, I might have to like let that one go for a while. I'm yeah, gonna, I might I have don't to cast know. that one off for just a little bit. Yeah, I finished it's... BoJack this year. Yeah, Great nice, show. Nice. Anyways, in the meantime, here's some stuff you should watch right now. Starting with the sequel to the theme of Spirit Halloween from friend of the show Nick Lutzko. Now, if you somehow missed the original theme for Spirit Halloween, we'll leave links to that and the sequel below. But yeah, it was a hilarious song about him trying to get the attention of everyone's favorite seasonal shopping experience and claiming that they'd offered him some cash in exchange for social media shares. Well, it worked. Looks like the check came <laughs> in, uh, and Spirit Halloween actually connected with Let's Go to commission a sequel with a budget and everything, just in time for Halloween. Like, that was yeah. a quick turnaround. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he loaded up his cart with costumes, animatronics, and, well, you'll have to see the rest for yourself, but here's a quick clip to uh, pique your interest. I turn my house into a Spirit Halloween. I've got clowns in the kitchen. I've got grandpas on the keys. I've got ghouls and skeletons, too. It's almost Halloween, baby, yes, you know what to do. It's honestly insane how good he is at writing catchy pop songs about ridiculous topics. Mm -hmm. uh, the song legit sounds like a hit, and it's catchy as hell. Plus, there's this whole Let's Go cinematic universe that's yeah. tying in with itself. The Man in the Stairs, the man the stairs appears in this Jeff one. Jeff Bezos, uh, yeah. Grandma. Yeah. yeah it's, uh... This is going to culminate in some kind of Avengers Endgame thing years down the line, I'm yeah. telling you. And he also has like an entire like legit music career. On top, of, on top yeah. of his joke songs. Well, oh, and in between both of these, he released the song about gremlins. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that, and that's, a, that's a great little Halloween uh, song to watch. The best part Where is that... Where have all the gremlins gone? I I know we had talked about him before, but I had, I was just barely aware of Dan Bongino mm -hmm. before the Nick Let's Go song. And now... I see him everywhere, and every time I see him, I can only think of the song. Dan Bongino. <laughs> Nick, yeah. let's go also. I, I didn't know this connection, but uh, the when he worked for Super Deluxe, he mm -hmm. did the uh, Eminem song in the style of Talking Heads that oh, was perfect. actually very, very catchy. There you go. So, uh, yeah, good for him. Yeah. Anyway, you should also check out a new interview and news program yeah. web series from the creators of South Park. Uh, it's based entirely in the world of deep fakes. It's called Sassy Justice with Fred Sassy. It basically plays out like any normal local news program would with an investigative reporter, but that reporter is a deep fake of Donald Trump who interviews people from the world of politics, tech, and more. The production value here is insane. The deep fakes are some of the best I have ever seen. I like. Yeah, this pet project has, like, they obviously had a a great idea in doing this, but are utilizing their production team at South Park Studios to perfect this. Like, but like these are these are the best looking deep fakes I've ever seen, and it's like they're they're going out of their way to not try to actually like try fool anyone. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's just like fake. if they whatever version of this that they're using, if someone else were to do it, it I don't well, know. Well, yeah, no, it, it is ridiculous. It's like, and they use their own voices, so it's even funnier. Yeah, like, it's. It, the, it comes off looking great. Yeah. Anyway, the production value is pretty insane. The deep fakes look great. Uh, it's the guys from South Park. Pretty much everything they touch is gold. Yeah. Some of the highlights that we enjoyed include Mark Zuckerberg as the owner of a local dialysis clinic <laughs> and the head of Jared Kushner with the voice and body of a toddler. Yeah, that one, uh, uh, I don't even want to say the quote because we'll get kicked off of YouTube for saying it. Yeah. But uh, it's great. Yeah. You should watch it. We'll leave links to that down below. And finally, if you really want to torture yourself, I mean, this one's hard. 
I mean, I love it, but mm-hmm. it's a hard watch. Yeah. Vic Berger partnered with Vice to release a supercut of the insanity of President Donald Trump that covers his entire campaign and presidency, and it clocks in at over a goddamn hour. Here's the challenge. Can you make it through the entire thing? Because it has taken me multiple sittings to get through parts of it, and I still am nowhere near completing it, but there, the, the clip I want to show, I just a, cl- a quick one here, this goes on, just this like thing here goes on for 10 minutes. Billions and 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 and billions 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 and yes billions and billions and billions and billions that goes on for 10 minutes and it's all different clips it's it'll make you go crazy you know what i'm already this week is already pushing me to the edge so fuck it go over go over to go home Pour a big stiff glass of whiskey and put on the new Vic Burger video. Yeah, there's also one of my favorite things in here is he does the because Trump voice is nobody does something better than me. Mm-hmm. And he, there's you know a good five minutes of that, but it lists out everything he says as he's saying it. What he can do. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Links again below. Uh, that's it for news dump today. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out our two videos from earlier this week. Um, <clears throat> one of them is uh, Santa getting caught in a quid pro quo with the Trump <laughs> administration. <laughs> And uh, and Tech News Day, which was what was Tech News Day? It was about uh, McDonald's ice cream machine. Yeah. Sorry, ice cream machines broke. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll be back for a weekly weird news because there's got to be something weird happening in the world this week, right? Yeah. We'll see. And then maybe next week, do some election coverage. Pretty big deal. Yeah. Bye. Bye.